Welcome to episode 16 of the Inner Headspace podcast. We are back from a holiday break from the podcast, our first week we've missed. And luckily it was intentionally, it wasn't for any other reason. So, um, hope the holidays were good. This is releasing on the first day of 2021, but it is being recorded before then. Ooh. <laughs> Time travel. Uh, so, I've got a topic that I'm going to start us on, um, and we'll just go from there. I had something else I was going to say, and now I'm forgetting what it was. Oh, well, maybe it'll come back. So the topic of today, at least the beginning topic, don't know where it's going to go, is one that I heard from, uh, I got prompted on and I left a note of it. And it is basically, if, what if you got all the money you would have earned in your lifetime all at once up front? And how would that change the way people actually go about spending their money and living their lives? Well, as that one guy that was interviewed on Fox, you know, hookers and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people on Fox that said that. <laughs> uh, but I think some interesting questions that arise from that is like... <clears throat> What if you got all your money, not necessarily when you were born, but like as soon as you hit like 18, you got all the money you would have earned in your adult life <sighs> just right out the gate, like deposited right into your bank account. And what if you like get out well, and it's like a thousand dollars? Yeah, I was going to say like, <sighs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to die. Project. Maybe I'm just a homeless piece of or shit. You go homeless. Something happens that see, that's the scary part is like. If you get a super low amount of money and then like your friend gets like billions of dollars. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and you can't move that money around. The only thing you can do with it is spend it. Which also brings up like, in this fictional world, it wouldn't be capitalism because there wouldn't be revenue because then that would mean no, hey, people look, would be hey, earning hey, the money. We're ignoring all that bullshit. Yes, yes. yes. Fancy you know, trying to get into the details yes, of okay, why this okay. is stupid. That's fair. That's fair. People tend to plan their life around what's called cash flow, where basically you're us utilizing the money that's coming in consistently. This is my high school finance class? <laughs> oh, my God. Where you're utilizing it to then put it, whether it's investing in something or basically just Making it so you can make your money work as if it was more money. Make but your money work for you. Exactly. What they say. Don't work for your money. Make it work for you. But then if you get it all at once, then it's like, okay, well, first I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy a reliable car. And then I'm going to put everything in the house. And then what? Because no one would have a job. Or you, you could have a job, but it wouldn't be a paying job, obviously. So it's like, how... I guess, say you got, maybe you only make a million dollars in your lifetime. Damn. A normal person, if you get it throughout, you'd be setting these goals and you'd be like, okay, I'm going to save up till I hit this margin and then I'm going to spend it for a down payment and then pay off the rest. But then say you just get given all your money, there wouldn't be that planning there wouldn't be that goal setting there wouldn't really be any of that you would just it'd be instant gratification for everything and i feel like to me that would cause problems with the way our brains work uh with dopamine and i think it would make us resort to some like other stuff in order to chase that feeling of progression to be like yeah cocaine <laughs> exactly though like drugs would probably be a th like a normal thing uh crime would probably be a normal thing even though crime kind of technically is but it's kind of overrated crime is overrated but i think 
I don't know. It's just interesting to, it changes your entire life because since your entire life revolves around your income and what you do with that income and the rate at which you receive the income, if all that's thrown out the window, it's like your life, to some people, your life would seemingly have no meaning. Well, all right. Let's not blur lines here. Okay. You know, like, okay. You can still have a passion and do something. Yes. Whether that passion generates revenue and monies and all that, like, like throwing that out the window, as long as you just do something you like. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, if it's painting, okay, you just buy your supplies and you just yep. paint all fucking day. But but the other the other part of this is like, instead of like, like when you spend money now, yeah, you don't think of it as a permanent deficit of income, right? Like, I'm going to buy this stuff for the podcast and it's like, I spent this money over time or up front, whatever I chose to do. Yeah. And then in a month or two, it's like, oh, that money is now back. Like it fills in the hole. But like, yeah. since you're not gaining money, you spend money and it's gone forever and you're never getting any more. Okay. So I'm just saying, I'm, that yeah, doesn't yeah, necessarily like, mean I, like I under, much, but I'm saying, I understand like, what you're the saying. The mentality of it. Um, so it, this will, first of all, depend on how much I receive from my future self to how fucking lazy I decide <laughs> to be. Or maybe I, I go into a car accident and I just die. As Exa- like, oh, well, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, first going back to the whole meaningless, mm-hmm. you know, like I would say for some people, like, like I understand where you come from when you say meaningless because, yes. you know, whatever your habit is of like going to work. Mm-hmm. Like doing doing the same thing for five days and then having your two days off. Yeah. That's obviously going to be completely thrown off. You're gonna to have to figure out what to do with your life in the meantime. Yes. And I would say for us, for example, um, you know the whole thing where like I don't have the statistics, but people always say it from what I hear. You know, people are like win the lottery, they like yep. lose it within like the first year or whatever, like or less, yeah, or less, <laughs> yeah. like millions and millions and millions of dollars. They blow, lit- yeah. like, they literally lose it just like that. Uh, and so that's painful. So for I would say for us, but maybe we have some like untapped dark side where we, <laughs> where it's like, oh, we actually get that type of power and we do that. I will, I will say I've been in, I've been there, but that was technically right out of high school before I was even a quote unquote more experienced adult. So I, I made like when I worked at Albertsons, I made enough to like just spend money whenever I wanted without looking. And then like when I left that job, I went to a different job that didn't bring in as much income. I still had those habits. Okay. But then obviously I self-corrected, but this is assuming that this is just normal. Like this is the normal way of the world. So I don't think people would have those like, unless it's an instinctive habit, like yeah. you're saying, like if it's part of their personality to be impulsively buying things. Yeah. Like, which is why like a lot of the times for, you know, poor people, mm-hmm. Like, and I, I believe this, that people always say, it's like, oh, the, the lottery and whatnot is a tax on the poor because they always spend their fucking money on it. Oh, interesting. Um, Because they're like, oh, I could win. I could win. So they spend yeah. they spend a lot of money on it yeah. and then they don't win. Yep. And so they're just spending what little money they have on stuff they shouldn't be spending on because they could win, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. so like they already have bad spending habits. So that's why when they win it. They just fucking toss it out the window. Right. I get everything I didn't have before. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to remember what you just said earlier. Um, because then I was going to talk about it. Fucking. Was it about the spending habits? Like spending it, it was, all at it was, once? It was after that. Um. Oh crap. What did you just say? I don't know. The worst part about this whole thing is like <laughs> the people listening to this and post can be like, idiot. I know. You just said this thing. 
Man, this is what a week off does to us, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We might have to uh, just come back on that one okay. if it ever comes back. If it ever comes back. Um, oh, my God. But I don't think there would – well, um, there would still be a, a form of poor and rich in this scenario. But what I think is interesting is knowing how much money you have to work with. Yeah. I think – on a technical standpoint in a perfect world would be good for the people who tend to just fly by the seat of their pants and just like I was saying, they don't look at their bank account or they don't care or they're scared to confront their bank account and see like, Oh, I'm overspending because they don't want to admit that. But then if you're like, Oh, I have $3 million to work with in my whole life. Then it's like, the the other thing though is culturally we wouldn't have we would have a different form of cash flow in terms of like if that was the normal thing for everybody there would be no such thing as like getting monthly revenue i guess so like you wouldn't be getting 5000 a month every month with this model because you have all the money access to, then it would come down to what are you spending every month pulling from this big pool of cash? But then the other thing is like, how would economy wise, would that mean <clears throat> anti-consumer practices? If we're still in a capitalist society here in this hypothetical situation, say someone overcharges for something, people are going to be way less willing right. to pull from their pot of gold because that money's never coming back, so then they're less likely to take a risk because investments don't exist in this okay. time. Well, like when you asked me the question, I was simply viewing it like how the world is right now, but it only applies to us in this scenario. Just oh. to keep it simple, just oh, to keep okay. it, it's just us. All right, all right. It's just only applying to us to keep things simple. That's how I was viewing it. Mm -hmm. Um, we can do that. And so, I think a lot of. I don't know if a lot of people would, but one thing that would come into my mind is just moving to a different country. Okay. Because American dollars are worth a lot more depending where you go. Uh, like a lot more. Right. Me and Cameron, I forget, it was some it's like some some place in Asia. <laughs> and we were like doing the math. And we we're just like looking up places to like for our, our it, it was so cheap. Oh yeah. Like I was like, oh my god, like that's it, why vacations was, are – the whole thing with, like, v vacationing out of country is, like, it's extremely affordable other than the fact that you got to pay for the flights. Yeah. But then they get you – since you have all this leftover money, then they get all their money from the tourists, like, attractions and things like that. Yeah. And so I would say if I were to receive all that money, uh, the first thing that pops in my mind is do I move somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And it, like – Honestly, what I would want to do with my money, like, well, I want to go to space. So this, I, I want to oh go to space. Oh my god! Oh, fuck it. Okay, this will be. I want to follow up on this. Okay, I just putting a pin in it so I can remember in my head. Okay, continue. I want to go to space really badly. I want to mm -hmm. own an island, but not. Oh my! I don't. God. I don't want to have like an Epstein rape island. I want to. <laughs> oh I want to have a Wii Sports <laughs> Resort island. That's what I a want. Who island? Yes, I. Like I want Matt from. We boxing to be there and he's beating the shit out of people. And then, and then he goes to the sword ring. And yeah, exactly. Like, like, fuck, that sounds really fun. Yeah. But now, like, practicality-wise, like, managing that, maybe it's a lot of work. I don't know. Maybe just pay someone to manage that for you. Yeah. But at least in my head, it sounds really fun. Like, oh, really nice. A really nice hotel. You know, all my friends and I were in Hawaiian shirts. Not a worry in the world ever again. Playing ping pong and the beach is right oh. next to us doing who the fuck knows what. We go on a bike ride to the volcano. You do a fucking bike <laughs> ride. It, jogging would be fucking fun for some reason. <laughs> Skydiving would be fun. Although I would be the type of person where it's like, oh, my shoot stopped the point and then yeah. I just die. <laughs> just die That'd on be your me. own island. That's um, why you get a, you, you put a squirrel suit on as a backup. There you go. <laughs> Jet skiing would be really fun. Oh man, paragliding. Um, I this is random, but like basketball looked really fun on Wii Sports Resort at nighttime. At nighttime, I was about to say it's it's lit up, and you're like, "Fuck, this looks <laughs> Dude, nice." Wii Sports Resort is just 
It's a dream. Par- it's paradise. It's you par- know, <laughs> I, I, I said it before, you know, I said we're living in the 13-year-old girl's fantasy, but like, see, my fantasy is owning an island and having it be like Wii Sports Resort. That's all living I want. Living Wii Sports Resort. That's amazing. Oh, man. Dude. That's I, a dream. Do you remember the Wii pad or whatever? You'd the sta- Wii Fit? Like, yeah, the Wii Fit. I remember going jogging on that shit, running around the Dude, island. But you couldn't actually run. That was you Wii Fit Plus. Wii Fit Plus, okay. Which was, well, which was like, that was the game it was in, but they used the island from Wii Sports Resort. Yeah, and I remember, oh, like, man. you couldn't, like, for, for the running one, you just had to, like, move your feet up and down. You couldn't, like, jog because you'd break it. Yeah, because your weight would just crush it. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, oh, fuck, man. this makes running look fucking fun i'm like look at that scenery okay imagine this jared imagine you have those like full 360 movement things for vr and you have a vr headset on you're jogging through woohoo island okay i guess it's a little societal sidetrack here okay about vr oh snap i'm a little worried about that you're worried about vr well it's gonna be fucking cool you know i want vr gyms no i did not know that there's one in boise what the fuck? I learned about that a couple weeks ago. There's a VR. G- we ha- we have to go then to it's see what swole. it's like. Okay, get swole at the VR gym. But like the reason why I'm iffy about VR, mm-hmm. like don't get me like fuck. It sounds fun. And like like if we're talking about like Sword Art Online VR, like dude, that's fucking cool. Oh, but I yeah, but then there's the dark side of that. Well, like I'm not I'm not even talking about like the death and whatnot and all that other shit. I'm just talking yeah. about like. Us socially, like, I want to say, like, I want to put in parentheses, like, the real world. Yes. Because, in a sense, like, that virtual, it's like, that's real. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, kind of like in a boomer speak, it's like, it's not tangible. You know, that's, yes. that's not, it's not physical. It's all. But I think, I guess my perspective on that is I agree. But at the same time, I still think it might be our best option as opposed to say we didn't figure out VR, at least not for a long time. We would still achieve that same escapism. Yeah. Through something just as abstract, but probably more damaging, like how we are right now with social media or like, cause like there's so many good things about being able to interact with an online community with people all over the world. And there's a lot of bad things that could come from that. Dude, I could just become a hot chick. You could catfish people, exactly. Or, like, you could just never be yourself. But, like, I'd say in VR, to an extent, and especially not with the technology we have, but you could get to a point where, like, you're basically representing yourself within this virtual world. But I think the bad part of that could be, like, if it becomes the next, quote-unquote, social media thing... I, I think it'll be a big entertainment thing as far as video games and movies go. Okay, see, like, yes, um, I, I think that could go deeper with what you just said. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not quite fully able to. Um, I think it was Carl Jung. Mm-hmm. He talks about the persona. Oh, and we I th- talked about this on, on one of our episodes. Probably. Because you're um, talking about Cody and VR chat. Yeah, and this this is relating back to that time when I talked about it, mm-hmm. where, you know, with people that are talking in VR chat, that's, it's not necessarily them. It's like, it's a persona Even of whatever the fuck it is. basically show their entire life on YouTube, that's still not them. Yeah. And like, I, I, I think that is some beauty of mm-hmm. like VR chat. Yeah. Is that, well, to some extent, like, if you wanted to genuinely be you, you mm-hmm. could do that because it's anonymous and you're not going to be judged for it. Yeah. And then on the flip side, you could just be completely someone else and like, you know, you could be a whole character. Yeah. You could be a whole character. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying like either or is like the right way to play VR chat. Yeah. But that's certainly a path because going back to then like the tangible and the virtual, mm-hmm. like for me, when I like making, I think it's woohoo Island is what it's called. <laughs> yes, it is. Like making woohoo Island a reality. <laughs> it just seems more appealing and I would say more difficult. Like if you were to say like, Oh, you could have Wuhu Island in real life or mm-hmm. it can be like completely VR and you could do it with and your it's friends. An entirely explorable, interactable. <laughs> yes. Place. And so, and I'm talking about like really advanced technology, like that we don't have right now. Exactly. Type, like, yeah. type of fantasy. 
And if I were to pick, I still, I think, would want to go with the physical Woohoo Island. Okay. Because it's it's just a deep feeling that could be wrong, but it's just a deep feeling where there's just something more valuable about it, like me actually being there rather than Cause, having it being virtual and some sort of illusion. Yeah, and you're going to create a way better and more intimate connection to the location slash there's nothing that's going to just take the real thing away. Yeah. Like again, there, I, I, and my issue is I don't want to call the virtual one fake necessarily. I don't want to call it fake, right. but I would say they're definitely two different experiences. Yes. And I just find the real experience more attractive and but you could like list a bunch of shit like you know the humidity it was gonna be fucking hot the weather <laughs> the weather it's like oh hurricane you're all gonna die on the island <laughs> it, you know some weird you're mos- dying in the happy place man yeah like oh, some weird mosquito it's like oh you got bit by that that sucks for you like <laughs> you have malaria now but again i just find something <laughs> they're just again i'm not trying to downplay Mm -hmm. the whole virtual experience. Yeah. Because I do think there is something to be there in terms of enjoyment, right? Yeah. Because, like, you don't... You go to the island for enjoyment, you know, and you you do VR for the enjoyment. Um, But, again, it's... uh, It's like looking at a pattern is how I view it. And it's like, that pattern doesn't quite look right. So, I... I'm feeling iffy about it. That's how I feel right. about virtual reality, basically. Okay. You know, what's funny is <clears throat> everybody that gets raised on VR is going to have not that opinion. And prime example is us yeah, being raised on the internet, being around the internet pretty much our entire lives. Yeah. And we don't have a problem with the extent that internet can go for the most part. Whereas people who didn't have internet until they were like 30 years old, and then all of a sudden there's a thing going on. Yeah. All of a sudden they're going to be way more resistant to it. And I think if anything's going to be a thing we're resistant to, it will probably be virtual reality because we're going to like it when it's a fun little experimental thing and like, oh, a new way to play games or watch movies. And then all of a sudden it's going to become real. Like it's going to be just the thing and all of a sudden we're gonna be like i don't like this yeah like and the the reason why i don't want to like downplay it is because i'm kind of comparing um i'm kind of comparing virtual reality to like a dream that you have because mm-hmm. i feel like that's almost the fucking same thing like in a dream and then being in virtual reality yeah like your mind's there but you're not like physically their type of deal if that right. makes sense right so that's why like Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back to what you were saying mm-hmm. about the times being different, yeah, and whatnot. Um, and that could be completely. It was like why I'm iffy on it because now I'm gonna jump back again from what we talked about last night, yeah. Where I said it kind of feels like the whole concept of what I believe in, like Rome wasn't built in a day, yeah. With technology just ramping and ramping and ramping up. It feels like a lot of people, and again, like this is what you define as success. Yeah. Whether it be monetary gain, social success, social prestige, like what? Yeah. Um, I would say at least in the monetary realm, a lot of people could make a lot of money Mm -hmm. on the internet in in a day, like extremely fast. And I'll not in a very skillful or disciplined way. It was almost like look of the draw. Yes. And I'm referring to, I'm originally referring to like streaming and shit like like that. Game streaming. But this also literally applies to like TikTok. Oh, Um, I got, I got a sour spot for TikTok. I see. Well, like I want to have a sour spot for that stuff, but the reason why I don't want to is because I kind of view it as like a little Darwin thing. Like, you know, if people are making this much money with this little resistance, 
without like any context like i think or everyone effort. <laughs> or effort i think a lot of like a lot so many people would agree it's like yeah you go with that path you know what i mean oh yeah and so that's why i don't want to knock on it but and like you could still pull out cards like oh you know it is skillful because like could you do that type do you know of deal? how much work it is yes it's not it's not necessarily against people who are taking advantage of the stuff that they get like it's all fair if someone gets lucky and they get a following they get to make a living off of it like sweet that's awesome but like it's not necessarily the people taking advantage of what's happening. It's just, I, I think, at least from what I'm gathering, is it's the concept of being able to... It, it's less of a requirement to, like... I, this is all dependent on the person. There's obviously different circumstances and contexts, but, like, it's seemingly less difficult to blow up and make a bunch of money really fast and really easily. Yeah. With less effort required. Yeah, like, and to t- to add on to that, because everyone, like, so many people are doing that, yeah. like, following the same algorithm mm-hmm. um, equation, I should say. And I would say, like, the only thing that would matter that differentiates people is just, like, physical appearance at this point. Because everyone's doing whatever's the fad in the moment. Yep. Everyone's hopping on the bandwagon. And it seems like what differentiates people quite simply is almost just your physical appearance. Yeah. Um, and your personality. But even then to be argued, like there are influencers that seem like either like, they're ripping someone else off or they're trying to replicate see, a personality. That's why uh, uh, I'm going to take a stance here, but I'm going to take oh, it anyways. Like oh. I don't really like vloggers. So I'm going to say it. I don't, yeah, because every time I watch their video, they have, and maybe they are just that excited with life, and they're just that happy I all the feel time. Like it puts so much unnecessary pressure. If you're doing it, say on YouTube, to make money, there's one thing for vlogging for your own, like for your family and for your personal like documentation of your guys's like life. It's the same exact thing as like taking photos and then saving the photos. Yeah but it's in video form or there's like the extreme version where it's like, I'm posting a video of my life every single day without any breaks and putting a lot of pressure on my family to perform in front of a camera or to look perfect or to formulate random situations for views. Yes. And so for stuff like that, I'm just like, Oh, it's uh, (laughs) what'd you say? It's not genuine. Yes. You know, maybe a little dishonest, slightly shallow shallow in some cases you know maybe a false perception of how a family really is yes um and then i remembered something i forgot but i never said i forgot it Mm -hmm. so this is going back to the whole vr's i'm iffy about it because i'm a boomer essentially (laughs) um a zoomer a zoomer a zenial. That's my favorite one. <laughs> so I'd always like Davis and Carson, like they always say, shut up boomer. And I say, shut up zenials to them. Zenials. Or shut up zenial. We're like, right. You and I are right on the edge of millennial and Gen Z. Yeah. Like, but like anyway. And so Carson would always think that's not a real thing. And I made it up. And mm-hmm. so it was like his uncle's girlfriend for Thanksgiving she mm-hmm. identified herself as a Xennial. And then Carson was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's real. He was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh Anyways, my gosh. Um, what I found was interesting. So I went to the eye doctor. I don't know. It was like last week or something. I don't remember. Time goes by so quick now. <laughs> and it's it's been years since I've been to the eye doctor. Like, yeah. I, I think like middle school maybe is the last time yeah, I went I, to the eye doctor. I think I've taken one uh vision test in my life and i was like okay. 2020 um and so it's my first time okay it's so fucking fancy i gotta say i don't remember where i went i don't remember what the place was called but um you drop something <laughs> yeah i keep going <laughs> um like i would always take an eye 
an eye exam. Mm-hmm. I like a Shopco. That's at the back of the store. <laughs> Shopco, <laughs> yeah. I think Shopco like went bankrupt or something. They shut down. I don't think there's Shop- more, I think right? there's a Shopco. I thought they, I thought they Maybe shut they down. Maybe they got bought out. Oh, okay. I don't. Um. Anyways, and so, you know, it's in the back of the store. You know, they got some, like they got. They're yellow plastic computers because of how old they are. You know, they used mm-hmm. to be white, and then they just turned yellow because of how old they are over time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're running, like, Windows XP. <laughs> yep. Sometimes Vista. They, yeah, and then they take you back and, like, all right, some air is going to blow in your eyes or some shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just going to blow in your face. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, they take you back, and they're like, one or two? One oh, yeah. <laughs> or two? <laughs> yeah. Um, and like I think the, the stuff you take at school. Yeah, like I just remember the equipment being clunky, maybe like yeah, uh, archaic. Like yes, yes, outdated, perhaps outdated. Like it, clearly not the fanciest of places by yep. any means. Yeah, but that's where I'd, I'd always go for there. And then that that like that was my perception of going to the eye doctor, right? So I go to this new place, like fucking huge glass doors. They got like a waterfall, like damn, you know, like, so fucking give me futuristic <laughs> vibes. I was like, I dig, I like this. Uh, and so I'm filling out a form yeah. and then I get to a page and it says, look, there's two categories. The first, like the question was, how often do you spend time looking at a screen? First one was work slash like office. And the other one was like at home. Uh-huh. And so I was like, oh, geez. I, do you have to choose one or the other? No, no. You just put your time, how much time you spend. Oh. Like, you literally just write how many hours. I spend each... more time looking at a screen than I don't look at a screen. Exactly. <laughs> and so I looked at it, and I was I like, I was, I'm like, I'm being serious. Like, I think when I wake up mm-hmm. until I go, even when I'm in bed, I'm looking at a screen <laughs> for a fuck. Like, that's how much I'm looking at a screen. Here's my breakdown. I wake up. I usually don't check my phone in the morning. I always check my I phone. I wake up, get ready, go to work, look at a screen for essentially eight hours. Yeah. And then if I'm not looking at the computer screen, I'm looking at either a camera screen or my phone screen, or I guess if you want to count, my watch screen. And then I come home from work. Yeah. And I generally look at my phone screen for a little bit. Maybe I'll make dinner. So there's my break. (laughs) Yeah. And then I'll probably come and look at my computer screen or my phone screen until I go to bed. Yep. And repeat. It's like almost like sad to admit that, but like it, it, it's crazy. Well, and so I was sitting there, I was like, I don't know what to put down because it's going to be such a ridiculously large, because it wanted how many hours per week? (laughs) Anytime I'm not sleeping. (laughs) Yeah, and so I was just like, how many hours per week? And I was just sitting like, I was like, I don't know what like, the math do on that. And so I just I just did, I just literally wrote 50-50. I wrote 50 hours for like work office, and yeah. then I wrote 50 for home. So 100% total. <laughs> no, no, just that's the hours. So 100 oh, 50 hours. 50 hours, okay. Yeah, so 100 hours total per week. Oh, oh, I got you, yeah. Which is not nearly enough. <laughs> not nearly enough. And so, the the I like I, the machines they tested me on like like we're like <laughs> it's like the uh, like the, again where I used to go it's like Wally he's all rusted and you know picking up the dirt <laughs> it's like a big box yeah but then the place yeah. I go to they're all like Eve yeah <laughs> like I, I'm not even kidding all black and white white chrome yeah fucking sleek, sleek as shit yeah sharp I'm just like oh. So like LED screen. Yeah. So like the machines I was using there is fucking amazing. And so then like they bring me into a room. There's like, yeah, wait, wait for the, uh, you know, doctor, whatever, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I really liked him. And so, you know, he comes in and, you know, we're just, we're just talking and he's like, yes, yeah, so you are the, uh, you know, like everyone in your family wearing glasses, but you, I was like, yeah, I got a. Uh, Got lucky, I guess. Well, you're not going to be lucky if you keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're talking, and he's he's flipping through my sheet I filled out. <laughs> you all sweat, like a bead of sweat yeah. drips down your forehead. <laughs> oh, and so, like, like the first page was, um, 
just like information like how to contact me then like the second page was um like like medical history or some mm-hmm, shit mm-hmm. and then the third page is the uh like the screen time stuff <laughs> And so when he gets to the third page, I literally see his eyebrows. His like he like scrunches up. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> when he looked at my and what I saw, like I was just thinking, I was like, "That's like I downplayed, I downplayed how like <laughs> you lowballed it. I low, I extremely lowballed it." And he was like, he even said, he said, "Wow, you look at screens a lot." <laughs> and then I said, "Yeah, you know, uh, um, I I told him I was like, yeah, I." And I'm a business admin assistant, you know, I'm all like, it requires me to look at the screen. Even yeah. when I'm in class, like I'm typing on a laptop, like I, I don't, I don't like physically write notes anymore. Right. Because well, what, like I could type way faster than I could write. So that's yeah. why I like to do it first of all. Yeah. Um, And it's not as pain, a pain in the ass when you go to erase something. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh fuck. And then I, I'm erasing it. And then the teacher keeps going. I'm yeah. like, what a fucker. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, like, I, like, so, like, at school or when I'm working <clears throat> at school, mm-hmm. again, I'm literally almost always looking at the screen. And then when I come home, I'm looking at a screen. Yep, same. And so I, was, I just kind of explained that to him. And then, we, we, like, we're like, just from there, we're just talking about like how my vision is and all that stuff. Yeah. Um. But it was just his surprise <laughs> by how much I lowballed it. First of all, <laughs> yeah, the, the the little shock he gave to him when I when I it's told like, him how much I was on it. Yeah, um, and I guess I'm a little uh, I'm built different a little bit. <laughs> built different <laughs> when it, when we were taking my eye exam and whatnot. He did was he, like, "Did he mention like this will kill you?" <laughs> well, no, so he was like. Do your eyes hurt when you're looking at the screen for this long? I was like, no, not really. Mm-mm. He's like, you don't get any straining or anything. It's like, no, not at all. And he's like, okay. And then um, when I was doing like the one two shit, um, he's like one <laughs> or two. Like this one, he's and then he started going. He's like four or five, and six like, or seven. Like, yeah, 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 I was, I was like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I've never been this far. <laughs> um, and then I remember he's like, he's like, interesting. He's like, let me try this. And he's like, and then he like was doing some other shit. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and so then um, I was asking him about it. He's like, yeah, you got, you got better vision than 2020. I was like, oh, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> he's like, are you human? I was, I was like, and I, I think it was just funny because of how shocked he was from. And then you're like, okay, so at worst, my <laughs> eye, my eyes degrade to 2020. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, you know, I was just, I thought it was funny, but. The whole point of me talking about that was the his shock factor to my <laughs> use of your exposure to screen, to screen time. Um, and then I'm sure I'll be like that when I'm talking to you know, my kids, if I ever fucking have kids or just someone younger. And they're like, yeah, I actually like I'm blind now. Uh, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's more of I more often meet people on VR than I do in like a real world. Oh, like, yeah. And so when I, if I were to ask them, like, well, how often do you like see people? And they're like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe once a week, <laughs> maybe two times. Yeah, that's gonna be the next thing to go is social interaction. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm gonna be that guy then where I'm just like, fuck. I you. haven't met someone in six years, actually. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and I don't. I, I'm not saying that's bad, you know. Like, I'm, I'm sure you get some like evolutionary biologists be like, oh, that's not good. But anyways, yeah world yeah well we're evolving actually like maybe you're a living example of human evolution around technology (laughs) see i was listening um more about brett weinstein and he was talking about he he talks about it and davis doesn't like it oh um like he talks about why I, i i don't think it necessarily it's impossible like so he talks about immortality and he's like it's like why you don't want it and stuff like that. Yeah. And he was explaining because there was another scientist, I forgot his name, but he viewed um uh senescence aging as a mechanical problem that can be fixed. Like 
flying a rocket it's like oh it's not working okay like let's work it out yeah that's 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 how another person viewed it but brett viewed it as you know maybe that's not something you want to quote unquote trying to fix yeah because he said and like the reason why people don't like this he said like our immortality quote unquote like is already in place yeah because what he was saying was you know like whatever we are like currently through natural selection like it's your offspring that are you going to be the ones to adapt and be the better versions of you suited for whatever's going on but people don't want to hear that because that's not us like that's the concept of i guess us if you want to call it that like it's just the idea of humans just continue on living. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean specifically. Someone from 100 years ago couldn't stand it where we are now. Yeah. Like, like we're just, I guess, for right now, like we're better versions of them in that sense. Yep. And it's always going to be like that. Yeah. And so, like, in, when, you, when you say it like that, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll keep living. But for the individual, it's like, well. That's not me, though. <laughs> yeah, that's not me, though. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why he was saying people don't. I like that. I want to go back to the the screen thing real quick. Just okay. kind of thought. I think one of the reasons why us staring at screens all day isn't as affecting as affecting us as much is because the only metric really that I'd say we have before this is the people before us who got eye damage from staring at TVs for too long, right? Yeah. The thing is though, I think Nowadays, screens are way less harmful to our eyes. Not to say that they're not harmful at all, but compared to older screens, I think staring at a CRT or anything else, like old, is probably going to do more damage to your eyes than than a modern phone screen or a modern modern commu- computer monitor, especially with functions like like I have it set on my phone to like automatically turn off blue light after 10 p.m. I don't have that. And like on my monitors, I can turn off blue light, and blue light's the thing that damages your eyes. Okay. And that's why it's beneficial to have blue bo- blue blockers, um, which are just yellow tinted glasses to block uh the blue light from like destroying your eyeballs. And it's important, like especially with a job like mine, where literally intensely staring at a screen for like detail as far as editing or whatever and then coming home and then essentially doing the same thing playing a game or editing something of my own or anything like that it's eventually i think we'll get to the point where like we can reduce blue light problems pretty much fully but nowadays i think there's way more options to help reduce that impact on your eyes than there was 50 years ago when TVs were first coming around and kids were going like needing glasses due to the damage to their eyes from these early stages of technology where now it's like you spend so much time and this doctor, but obviously he was probably older, right? Yeah. Like forties, forties, forties is forties, fifties. But like, if you think about it, I use my dad as an example. So I, I don't think, I think my mom was born needing glasses, okay. but my dad wasn't, or maybe I've got that wrong. But all I know is my sister and I don't, we don't need glasses. So that leads me to believe that like, we're going to need glasses later, obviously, but that could also be because maybe the effects of what we're doing now won't affect us until 10 or 15 years from now. Maybe. Or it'll take another 10 to 15 years of the same activity to hit that point. Or it could be 30 years because now everything's 50% more safe. Right. And like it could, if you want to go with stomper math, it's just like simple, like, Oh, well screens are 50% safer to look at. Then it's going to take twice the amount of time to damage your eyes. Or if you're taking precautions, like, using blue light blocking or blue light settings or just not going on a screen as much. But I feel like it's so much harder to do that nowadays because it's so deeply ingrained in everything we do at this point 
as far as something as simple as communicating with someone, you have to look at a screen. I'm ready for a chip to be put in my brain. <laughs> I am ready. Like I said earlier, I don't think I want to be on the front lines of testing any I new know, stuff. I don't want to be on the front lines of that either. But once it gets all sorted out, I'll be honest. I'll do it. That would be crazy. Just I like, don't give a fuck. I'll do it. But, I think it'd be awesome. I think, I think I'm scared of that. I think I'm like... I wouldn't want it to be reduced to a single synapse in my brain to tell you something, you know? I'm not saying that there's anything innately like bad about it. It's just oh, that's where I'm at right now. Obviously, I'm just look change, like, I'm just thinking of like all oh, the cool shit that might be real for a minute. It's like, whoa. It's uh what do they call it? Um not uh starts with an A, not virtual reality. It's augmented um, reality. Augmented reality. Yeah. Where you just see all the like when I look at stuff, I have like a fucking, I have a UI when oh. I look at things. I'm just like, whoa. We, I got to show you this episode of the show called Black Mirror. I've heard people, I've heard so many people say it's like good. There's this one where this guy literally gets like a gaming chip put in his brain. And essentially what it is, is an augmented reality thing. And it turns on whenever you enter this haunted house, like stage that they built. And then you can see, basically you see the game like it's virtual reality, but it's just through your own eyes. I won't spoil it, but essentially it goes wrong for all the reasons you'd think it would go wrong. Yeah, I, I would, there's, there's definitely a lot of... Is it, but there's, there's like a, a twist on top of a twist okay. on top of a twist. And it's like by the end of it, you're like, oh my God. So maybe we could... I'll show you that soon. But uh, another thing I'm like super freaked out by, and this is the thing I put a pin in earlier, because you said you want to do two things if you had all that money. Have an island or go to space? Well, both. Or both, yes. So, for me, I am... This is so hard for me because, like, if of all the science, I think space, like astronomy, is the thing I'm most interested in. But other than, like, what would you say, biology, where not necessarily, like, the makeup of animals, but, like, I think wildlife is really cool, like, wildlife biology, but astronomy specifically is like so incredibly fascinating to me and there'd be literally no other experience a human could have that is being in space and on one hand i would love to do that it would be such a unique experience for a human to feel and on the other hand i'm like that is terrifying something goes wrong there's nothing anybody can do See, for me, I just, like, I want us to be like Star Wars. Like, I want Dyson Spheres. I want all this cool shit. Oh, man. That never. I want to <laughs> go from planet to planet. You know, I want a vacation home. I want of, like, Saturn's moons where I can see Saturn's rings out from my backyard. Yeah. Like, uh, now given, there's a lot of scary, I, I think scary is the right word. Yeah. Out there in space. A lot of unknown. Um, Mostly unknown. <laughs> I remember in high school, and it was like 1 a.m., you know, got school. Like, I'm supposed to like wake up at 6. Uh -huh. I was just watching some YouTube video that was talking about like the craziest planets that we think are real or some shit like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're confirmed. I don't know. <clears throat> um, And it was just saying like, oh, this planet, like. It has like super high speeds of like glass like objects like flying through the air. like Weird. just all these crazy types of planets, and then I just like had this existential crisis thing where I'm like I'm a speck of dust, man. Oh no! And so I just <laughs> laid there. I was just like fuck. Oh my god! And so I just I just sat there because the, the the vastness of the the universe is just uh -huh. it's insane, incomprehensible. I think, okay, so if we, like, figured out space travel and it was more way more advanced, that would be incredible. Yeah. I, I think that's what No Man's Sky, like, captured my imagination with. Is like, it's so open world that you can just do what you want. And there's, like, all these weird interactions that you don't expect. But, like, as far as, like, right now, since we... <sighs> No one wants to put significant effort into expanding space programs. No one as in like pretty much no country wants to put significant effort in 
And you could make the argument, Ooh, Tesla, we don't know what Russia or China are doing. So maybe, but like, maybe we're talking to aliens so that we already got that covered. And we're just right, waiting to like, expose it. As a person like in my shoes, that doesn't exist. You know, so like my perception of it is going up in the ISS in a spacesuit and like fixing parts of the ship or like going to the moon and being like, oh, this is crazy. But then like you think about it and it's like, I sure hope a rock doesn't fly through and tear a hole in my suit. That nah, would suck. Like that's not going to happen. So I watched, I was watching a couple of videos about, um, uh, the international international space station. Yeah. And essentially what you're experiencing on that, um, space station isn't necessarily the full feeling of no gravity. What you're feeling is actually like, Essentially, the space station is continually falling to Earth, but it's at an angle since obviously we're on a, a, a circular orbit. You're falling around the edge of the Earth, but you never hit the Earth because of the angle that it's at. So you're constantly getting pulled down. You're in a free fall forever. So, and that was just basically explained like technically, it could be different once you're outside of that, but. Anyways, it's like the, I don't remember his name, Chris Hadfield, which is like the big famous guy who lived, basically lived on the, the ISS. And he did all like, this is how, what it's like to drink water. This is what it's like to cry. This is what it's like to do this. He basically does all these Q and A's and demonstrations and stuff. And, uh, he, he was talking about like, what would happen if you were to experience space without a spacesuit, and essentially he was saying like, you'd be simultaneously freezing and boiling at the same time. Like your blood would be boiling. I think there's a word for that. But your skin like would water. be freezing. Your lungs would instantly go completely flat like a Ziploc bag. And anyways, it's just like thinking about like, that would happen nowhere else but space. We are not designed to be exploring space. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're All not right. technically designed to be doing most of the things we're doing, but well, such as flying in jets and well, like I like uh, Joe Rogan's take ta- take on it. Like, okay, we are on a spaceship and it's called Earth. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Joe Rogan thing to say, and we're. God knows what the fuck we're doing on this spaceship. <laughs> Talking about gorillas fighting grizzly bears. But, uh, all right, okay, so before that, I actually looked into it uh-huh. before Joran talked about it. Because I thought the gorilla would beat the shit out of a grizzly bear. Do you know how big a grizzly bear is? Well, see, is? that's the thing. The grizzly bear is like, like 300 more pounds or some <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, and it's like seven or eight feet tall, and its <laughs> yeah. claws are like five inches long yeah, so i was like so because i was i was reading some debate about it and some dude was like because a, a guy was arguing for the silverback gorilla yeah it's like team monkey yeah but then the guy like started listing all the things of like the grizzly bear and then the dude's like that like the grizzly bear is gonna like chomp on that gorilla it's like oh grizzly like, bears don't have a natural predator and humans don't count because we're not naturally a predator to them we're technologically a predator to them same with uh, wolves. I don't know if you know this, but wolves have no natural predators. Nothing other than other wolves and other packs of wolves are predators to wolves. Uh, in a pack. I mean, a lone wolf will die to a mountain lion. But like a pack of wolves will win every time. That's the same for uh, orca. Crazy. Anyways. So many apexes. And we're at the top, but we're at the top because of guns, <laughs> <laughs> intelligence. Yes, but um, see another fascination with space. I'd love okay. to talk to an alien. I really would. That would be. Here's something. Do you think you'd go into shock? That's good. Okay, because I think you'd go into denial first. No, you'd be like, no, that's no, not real. No, no, I'd already believe it. I'm not a denier. No, uh, what I'm saying is like naturally, <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't be able to believe well, yourself. Well, I, I think I could, honestly. Is like, this a dream? This isn't real. Like, I think that's the kind of denial I'm talking about. Like, I see, yeah. I don't think this is happening kind of thing. See, like, 
and I'm sure there's so assuming aliens are real. I'm sure there's they are. a bunch of like I'm sure there's good aliens and bad aliens. Um, you know, I'm sure there's like some parasitic aliens that you don't like. It's like you never want to come Face across huggers. that thing. Yeah. Um, like so, you know, some like H.P. Lovecraft shit where it's like <sighs> I love H.P. You know, it's like it's like fuck that's ho- that's that's horror like yeah that's it's horrifying. terrifying yeah um but i remember this is through hp lovecraft it was like some i forgot what the species is called um i haven't i haven't read any of his work but from what i understand this is like like out of all like this is like this alien race he created they're not like cosmic horrors or anything mm-hmm. i forgot what they're called um, there's like a picture of them. I'm not going to describe it because I do a bad job at it. <laughs> but um, this alien species, what they're able to do, they're able to like swap their consciousness with other beings throughout like the universe. What? And they're historians. They're historians. Oh my! And so what they do is they swap with other living things throughout the universe, and then they, um, like you swap bodies, and so like I would be in their body. Yeah, and then th- you would just talk to them, and they'd be like, "Yeah, we're historians," and you, they'd just walk you through, and they talk to you while while your body is out gathering information about your society. And so, what in the world? And so then they swap again, but you forget your you forget that that ever happened, and then they keep the knowledge and they just record it. Damn. But they had a whole tragic thing where like like they had like a Mayan calendar where they were destined to like their civilization oh, yeah. was to fall. And so what they did then to try to save themselves, they like swap bodies with like humans so that they would live because the human that like the human conscious would die on the planet, oh <laughs> but my. they would survive on earth. Um, and they just wow. do but anyways. Like there, I'm sure there's like cool shit like that. Where it's like some fucking bizarre aliens where it's like something that sh-. is not even comprehensible to us. Yes. And I don't, I just think it'd be really cool mm-hmm. to talk to aliens and it's like, uh, thinking how crazy it'd be like would it be that crazy i guess it would be like because it's not from <clears throat> earth okay I, so I, I assuming wa- you can properly communicate yeah which this is on the assumption that the alien is more advanced than us but imagine this imagine we somehow like all of a sudden this like alien tool just like we just see it floating around in space and it's yeah. like it's taken billions of trillions of years light years light years light years to come even close to us yeah and then it's just like damn bro what is this but they're like same level as us like same level of like intelligence so it's like it's just fascinating to be like we shoot a satellite out satellite dies we lose contact with it it just goes see i view it more like this um so we talked about this before, like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> like on Earth, you know. Sorry, religious people. Like, we all come from a single organism, right? Because we sh- we all share the same DNA. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. Um, and I always thought, like, how weird would it be? I don't know why I said that, but anyways, um, <laughs> you know, how w- weird would it be for us on Earth if there was, um, because we've we've had like sub. Uh, subtype of humans, or different oh, different yeah, types different of humans. Variations I was of like, humans. well, like how crazy would it be? <clears throat> and I guess it wouldn't be crazy because we would just be used to it. But yeah. if it were right now, like if there was, you know, a subtype of us, like a Neanderthal, yeah, Homo sapiens, like uh, you, you just kind of, you just kind of deal with it. I guess you know, maybe may, maybe in the end it is war and you, you dominate, blah blah blah. One but, would enslave the other. It's human nature. Or maybe maybe you just kind of coexist. I don't know. Yeah, but um, <laughs> unlikely. We can barely do that with our own, yeah <laughs> with our own kind. I I just kind of feel like maybe those same concepts would be applied to like aliens, where it's just like, all right, you know, I don't want to die. You don't want to. You, wanna you die. have to think about the the reason that aliens are out. Are they? Would they be going out for? Like you're saying, historian purposes. Maybe they're so advanced that they're just trying to keep track of whatever's going on. Or are they going because they need resources? There's that. And like, there's like the two different types. Or like they maybe they can't see in the same color spectrum and light spectrum as us. So they show up. They don't see us. Or they see something that's us, but it's not the way 
were, I guess, meant, quote unquote, meant to be seen. So then they either don't notice us as anything or they just move on because we're completely insignificant. How many, think about this, how many alien ships have flown past or through our solar system and just been like, I don't care. Okay, so this is like, we're getting to conspiracy territory. And again, I 100% believe in aliens. I do too. I, I we've said this before, but I find it more likely that aliens exist than they. Like you don't. view it as like a probability. <laughs> That's how I view it too. Like, but my issue is like, I forgot. Like recently, it was some you know like top level government guy. Mm-hmm. He was talking. I I forgot the article or something, but he was explains like, yeah, like they probably exist or something. Like it was something to the lines of like he was like nudging you about like yeah aliens exist type of deal yeah because um you know you have you have examples like edward snowden um Mm -hmm. the where when he had all his access to all this government stuff because it came uh, from i remember he was the guy where like some general would come to him and he's the general would say i want information about this he's the guy that would get information like the intelligence um He's the one that exposed uh, the whole uh, NSA Mm -hmm. for spying on us, Mm -hmm. uh, the phone calls and whatnot. Um, And he explained how he had ungodly amounts of clearance to all this information. And he tried to find aliens and he couldn't find anything before he left. What a man. Um, And then I think there's other stories of presidents that tried to do that as well, where they're like, I got to know our aliens are real <laughs> um, with the same thing. We're like, Oh, uh, nothing. Damn. Um, but again, like, then you have crazy stuff where um, this is an article, like kind of early on in the pandemic where they were like, Oh yeah, we have some, um, some crap, like some aircraft, not aircraft, some, some, Space spacecraft, not from this Earth type of deal. Like you have, oh, weird, I remember that. Yeah, you have weird shit like that. Um, and then like going back to conspiracies, you know, I I've heard of stories where there's some obelisk on Saturn or Jupiter's moon. Yes, yeah, so like like whoa. So and I don't know if that's real. It's whoa. it's kind of conspiracy, but um, I heard people talk about. It. I've heard I've heard conspiracies about um like maybe some weird stuff happening on our own moon like if i had superman's powers i would explore i would just explore the galaxy or the universe i would too because i'd be be like screw you guys i i'm just gonna cause problems i'm leaving damn i'll be back (laughs) well you'd but that'd prove aliens are real already because you'd be an alien alien. yourself yeah oh okay so going back to i i I don't want to say where i get this from (laughs) but you I know. think I know. You do know. But uh, I won't say anything. I, d- I don't want to be, uh, what do you call it? I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say controversial names here, but. <laughs> yeah, because you haven't said them before. But um, <laughs> I liked his take on it where he, you know, <sighs> never mind. Anyways. All right. We got to, we got to wrap up. We got to wrap it up. Like, yep. God. Aliens are real. I it's gonna, love the idea of dude, like it's totally going to be normalized. Like it, it, they're just going to come out and be like, "Yep." Yeah. Okay, I was going to say okay. I had a little idea about like maybe we're not in this scenario, but some out somewhere out there there has to be this scenario. Okay. So you know how on our planet, like you know, we're like we're working on oil. It's like, oops, I made a mistake, and then I killed like all these animals <laughs> in this environment. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And then they're like, we're sorry. <laughs> that happens to us. <laughs> yeah. No, no. And so I'm like, what if there's some aliens out there and they're doing some like crazy shit and they're like, oops, we made a mistake. And it's just like, just like destroyed half of a galaxy or something. <laughs> and they're just like, fuck. I watched, I watched a video about how Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxy are going to collide. And like, at first when I heard about like, that's inevitably going to happen, I was like, Oh man, that'll be the end. And it's like, it won't actually, because apparently when the two galaxies collide, we're going to basically be unscathed. Well, Nothing's like, going to change except our view. Yeah. And so 
I was going to ask you a question. So yeah. the pictures I see, so like, I see a lot of pictures of like the night sky and we could see like one part of like the Milky Way. And so like, that's how we determine like where we are comparing yeah. to like where we see in the Milky Way. Cause you see like, I don't, I'm not going to call it a, like, you can see like a side of the Milky Way and so many pictures. You can see a nebula. Sky. So like, that's like, that's not actual vision, right? That's like using fancy lenses yeah, and like so using, that's using like, extremely long exposure lenses okay. on a very, very small section of infinity using it's a combination of all the different light spectrums. Okay. So it's a combination of X-ray, gamma ray, um, like our ba- our normal color light, um, infrared. It's a combination of all of them, and then they're stacked on top of each other. And then it's like, then you can see it. So, <clears throat> okay, I'm just, we got to take a trip somewhere where we could go to like the least light pollution. Yeah, because I want to see what the sky looks like with like the least amount of light pollution. Okay. Because I always see the cool pictures of, of what you just described yes. where I'm like, fuck, that looks cool. So what's what's really cool is there's this picture that we saw that I learned about in high school in one of my astronomy classes where they took a a camera with a lens that's like ten millimeters by t- or something like that, like a really, really tiny image. Okay. And they pointed it in one direction. And it sat and took like a month long picture or okay. a week long or multiple weeks or something. Just like, so do you know how shutter speed works when, so your, your shutter is closed and then you click the button and it opens and closes again. And then yeah. whatever light is captured is what your image is. So a long, <clears throat> so, so a, a longer, slower shutter speed. Yeah. So slower, slower shutter speed is like, yeah. Letting more light in. But what happens when you do that is that's what causes blurry images because okay. like the light's moving. So um, the faster your shutter speed, the more still an object is. Okay. And the longer it is, the more light that comes in. So the whole point is like you point at a super tiny spot in the void of space. And you just let it sit. And the image with that came out. With shutter speed? With, like- yeah, with like a month long shutter speed. Okay, yeah. So then all of a sudden, all of the light that is pointing in that direction comes in and eventually hits the sensor and then it turns it into an image. And basically it's like an image which just looks like a bunch of stars, but since it's such good technology and it's a satellite uh, camera and it's in space itself and all these are the factors, it's like this extreme, extremely high resolution photo. And they zoomed in on one of the dots because it looks like just a bunch of white specks that we generally say, yeah, we, we look out oh, there. Those are just stars. Yeah. They zoom in, and each one of the white little dots is its own galaxy. Yeah. And mind you, that's a 10. That's a really, I'm just going to say, spitballing a number here. Let's just say it's a one inch by one inch square of one part <laughs> of the universe, and it's only a month long exposure. You zoom, it's like, hey, maybe there and is there someone are like us. <laughs> literally millions of galaxies in that image, millions of galaxies. And then it's like, whoa. Universe is big. You phys- you cannot fathom the amount of galaxies, stars, solar systems, planets, celestial objects, nebulas, things like that. Like you just literally, there's no way to fully comprehend how we exist. And that's why I think it's so nearsighted and it's so naive to say no way aliens exist that is just that is an impossibility in my mind i agree I there agree. is no way we are the only ones who got the perfect formula and the quote-unquote perfect formula is for our type of life it has been proven by species on our own planet that we are not the only type of life there are plants there are microorganisms. There are plankton, which is like a weird combination of like plant and bacteria. And like, we don't even know what's in our ocean. And it's like, how could we possibly think this is the only type of life that exists when we already know there's different spectrums of light that we can't even see without a special camera. And there's even more, there's an infinite spectrum 
that we only know like down to infrared and up to gamma and just in between those or x-ray or whatever the range is. We only know like a certain range on this infinite spectrum. And we're like, we're just lucky, I guess. <laughs> we're the only ones who could possibly have made it. And the there's Goldilocks zone. millions of galaxies <laughs> in a one inch by one inch square of an infinite void. There is no way. Absolutely no way. There are multiple Goldilocks planets that can sustain our own life form that we have already found. Whether or not they're still in that condition is up for debate, but because of how long it takes us to Yeah, we're just receiving this, that light from from billions, billions of, of light, light years. years. But like still, I don't know. That's that's why I'm like of course aliens exist. Maybe we'll never see them in our lifetime, but I feel like humans either already have or will interact with alien species at some point during their existence, as long as we don't go extinct. Which is like relatively wise, like in a sense, like we're also aliens because we're out yes. here. Like we could be alien to our own planet and we would never know it. We're from Mars. We're from Mars. Look at how much we're like tearing it down and not to get all political and uh, environmentalist, but like, I'm just saying we are using up our resources more so than anything else on this planet. Dude. Who's to say we didn't come here from another planet super long ago and we just started doing our thing and then we evolved. Okay. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> I want to then go back to psychedelics. Okay. Um, and this is like, I hear music, but, um, <laughs> that must be the outro music, Jared. Yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, fine. I'll, 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 okay. Going, not going to psychedelics <laughs> okay, later okay. time. Okay. Um, anyways, back to the thing before we go, it was yeah. just the, uh, i cause I've seen some crazy pictures, like some desert. Uh -huh. The sky was like, or the night sky was like fucking green. But then I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm just like, but it's like, this is it's not like this obviously has to be fucking touched up. Yeah. But I was like, but if it's not, I was like that that looks fucking cool. Um, because I've se I've seen videos of like people fucking around with, like the Aurora Borealis and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like I forget which country it was, but they have they have like a spa, and then um, it's like a natural hot springs, and it's like a place where you can see the Nordic Lights. And so while people are like just out chilling in their swimsuits, like the Nordic lights are above them. Oh my I was like, God. Fuck. Oh, I got to go there. It's amazing. The things we like to look at. <laughs> yeah. Which are like fairly insignificant. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's just light being bent. It's cause I never get to see you. That's exactly. Why. Yeah. So anyways, we could go on. We clearly have something pent up after taking a week off, but um that was episode 16 i thought it was funny how perfectly we ended we took a break right after episode 15 i didn't realize that but it was like very neat very nice and neat uh but we're back on our normal schedule um 2020 2021 will be our year jared <laughs> we're already at three we're at 300 downloads already that boggles my mind here i'll, I'll say this for the 2021 p yes. enthusiasts yes yes so like I've said before, like, you know, if a guy is seeking enlightenment on top of a mountain and climbs a mountain, well, he's not going to find the enlightenment because he didn't bring the enlightenment with him up at the mountain. <laughs> I totally heard that. Oh, that was you. That, that was, was you. Me. Okay. I was like, I swear to God, I heard that somewhere. And I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm going to apply that same concept to yes. 2021. Yes. You know, if... uh it's when you get to that top of the mountain when that when that new year when it becomes twenty twenty one. Yep. I promise you it's not gonna be magic. <laughs> you know, you, you forgot to bring something with you. Yeah. That means yeah. stay positive, everybody, and make sure you're you're not seeking something that you're not preparing yourself to have. And uh I guess that'll do it. That'll that's Jared's uh final final uh final words i didn't have to ask that time and uh 
We're not editing it on a quote like we said we would. I know. My bad. We'll have one next week. Next week, I promise. All right. Uh, if you want, follow us on all social media. If you're listening to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating. That would be nice. Helps with um, first impressions. Do all the YouTube stuff if you're watching on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, we post every Friday at noon, except for Christmas. And uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, and bye-bye.